KP classes dedicated to excellence. Hello everyone. Today we have Hannah and Brothers and he a student from the last from this year's coaching. She has secured All India rank 9 for which we are very proud. Let me begin by congratulating you Hannah. Uh, Thank you so much. Very wonderful result. So in this short interaction session, we'll be getting input from Hanan, which I'm sure will be useful for the future aspirants of the gate examination. So Hanan, I would like to begin uh, with a very basic question as to when did you start your preparation and what is the average time you spent? How was your study schedule and study plan? Okay, so I had completed um, my bachelor's uh, last June, but so by June of 2023, I was done with undergraduation. And my initial plan was to actually prepare by myself while working. But um, somewhere around beginning of July, I took out the syllabus. I tried to understand it, analyzed it. And pretty soon enough, I understood or maybe it is not within my capability to actually collect the content, organize it and make it efficient that uh, efficient in a way that it's useful for gate exam. So very soon enough, I joined KP gate classes um, for preparations. So initially the first one month, so from mid July to mid August, I was mostly spending, uh, uh, the time I spent was just during the classes for preparation and maybe one hour on in cuts or very simple topics like landscape or something to get, um, you know, get introduced to this preparation process. And maybe by somewhere around mid-August, I started much more seriously, spending around maybe two or three hours other than the classes. Um, yeah. Then by the last month or so, by January something, uh, it was almost around a good 10 to 11 hours daily. I was putting in all, all my time, all my effort into the preparation by January. Okay, so it was a progressive approach. You started slowly and made it more intense steady. So yes. I think that was helpful for you. That's a good insight. Uh, so as far as uh, the concentration, so spending 10 to 11 hours completely on steady in the month of Jan, that obviously takes a lot of effort. So how could you make, uh, how did you make sure that you stick to the schedule? Where the moment where you, felt, where you got 10, or where you felt that you should stop doing this hard work? Were there such moments and how did you tackle that pressure? So what happened was, um, it was supposed to move very smoothly, quite progressively. But during the months of November and December, something, something came up and I was not able to prepare at all. Uh, all, all that I could do was just attend the classes. Like at, That was all I could do at that point of time. So there was that extra pressure of having to put in that 101 during January. And of course, during, as I said, I started by mid-July. It's it's a good six to seven months full-time preparing for an, uh, and for an examination. There were times when I felt demotivated. But honestly, the classes were quite interesting. So I knew that, okay, if I go sit for the classes for those two or three hours, maybe let's let's do that for today and not stress myself too much out let's let's make it those two or three hours i'll do that for that day and that would be it uh yeah that's how i kept up that motivation it was just showing up consistently for the classes i that's what i would tell all of the aspirants to be consistent in your preparations if you're doing the live classes there would be days especially if you're working or if you're still in college you would be tired you do not feel like attending and all but still, just show up for the classes. That itself is going to make a lot of difference. Because the faculty, they are uh, putting in a lot of effort. They're very well dedicatedly trying to teach us uh, basic concepts. I never found the classes to be boring. Uh, none of the classes were boring, at least for me. So um, that would definitely help out people if you're feeling demotivated at times. Okay, that's nice. Thank you also. And uh, as far as resources are considered, during the course of this preparation for seven months, what are the resources other than the classes? Uh, so study material probably you have gone through. What are the resources you made use of during the course of the preparation? Yeah. 
um, there were the running notes that were from the live classes, then the study material that we had, then the in cuts actually did help a lot because myself, I'm not really good at memorizing. I, I, let's say I take a lot of time for memorization. So these in cuts itself, um, I could take up just maybe one a day and go through it. It's not necessarily uh, like printing everything into the into your mind, but just going through it, flipping through it uh, weekly or every three days or something. Um, that that helped quite a lot. I think the in cuts, uh, it's sort of underrated if you look at it because that's a lot of data. If you start, if you were to collect those and uh, study and bring it into that in cuts form, you you are going to unnecessarily waste a lot of time. So the in cuts were quite helpful. As for materials, that's what all I stuck to. Whatever was provided. Okay, and for practice, did you give your mock tests in the last months before the examination? And how did you do in the mock tests? Was it uh was the mark demotivating sometimes, or was it at par with what you got finally in the examination? What do you have to say about the practice test? Yeah, so I did the subject tests uh, as soon as each of the subjects were finished, as soon as the classes were over and my self-study on those subjects were over, I did the uh, subject uh, tests as well. So that that topic would be solidified. I don't, ha don't have to go back to it quite frequently. But as for the full-length mock tests and all, I think I attempted the first one by December something. Uh, that was not the time when I had completed all the portions. So the scores were not sort of great. But, uh, but I was... Uh, happy with the fact that whatever I had learned were all right. Those came out well during the mock tests. So that gave me a little bit of confidence. See, so uh, whatever I've studied is fine. Now I can look into whatever I've got to complete. So um, uh, yeah, the then the there were the other mock tests. I think I attempted five of those eight ones. It was not in par with the score uh, of what came out finally, but it was fine because for the mock test, um, it they, the mock tests are going to be at uh, a higher level, at an advanced level. So even if it's a minus 10 or minus 20 also, uh, I was all right with the fact that yeah, it's okay, maybe 50 or 45 or 60 also. I think that that's where I scored something around 55 for two or three of the tests. I was all right with it. But rather than thinking too much about it, um, the mock test, the advantage I think was whatever ones that I got wrong for the mock test, that was very much ingrained into my brain. So, okay, I got those wrong for the mock test. Now I remember that uh, question and the answers. But rather if I were to talk, take the same topic and learn it separately uh, while doing the while doing your general studies. I don't think I might remember those question and answers in a similar way. So mock tests are helpful in its own way. Absolutely, I agree. Just to add to it, so it was actually with our experience, like uh, we started the training students for gate examination probably six to seven years ago. And in the beginning, we had seen this. If we have given easy mocks to the students, they tend to get complacent before the examination. So we have evolved a mock test in a way to be at a standard, which in many cases is more or close to a hard gate examination. Yeah. So that students are open uh, to even looking at a hard, difficult paper in the exam. So I think that did help in uh, boosting the confidence once you see the actual paper on the day of the examination. Yes. Okay, so the, moving on to the next part. Uh, next question i would uh, i would ask to i would like to ask you about the part you have selected in part b was it architecture part or planning part and uh, did you make that decision during the preparation or finally on the day of the examination what was your approach to that i attempted part b one architecture part itself so uh, i attended the planning classes that was somewhere around september understood what was being taught what was the syllabus, um, try to understand the scope of uh, the content as well. How much more effort should I be putting into it if if I had to attempt planning for the examination? 
and maybe by october or something um, i had decided that probably it's best that i stick to architecture itself i do i love the subject planning is pretty good but in in terms of uh, attempting uh, the paper it felt like architecture would be better for me uh, and for me the difficult part in architecture uh, was the subject hoa was my difficult subject but during the classes um, hoa was quite interesting i found it quite tackleable like um, it was fine i felt i felt com comfortable with the topic if it were to come for the exam i felt okay it would be all right um, and so yeah i decided i would go with architecture itself. okay so that's nice and finally with respect to the future plan what are you planning for any thoughts on the specialization which you are planning to select is it mr chem plan m design or m tech what are you planning for uh, every five year if you have any thought on it yeah i am planning to pursue my masters in urban planning itself uh, it's it's a subject i've been interested in back from college itself um, the research topic and thesis were all uh, urban scale oriented so i feel like uh, i have a calling for that uh, field so probably i'll be sticking to urban planning that's good to know hana thank you for your insights i'm sure the future aspirants will be taking an inspiration from this and will get uh, some information to kick start the preparation from and i wish you all success in the future and uh, i would want you to come out with similar bright colors in all your future endeavors all the best for your future thank you thank you sir thank you so much and thank again you. thanks to all of the faculty it would not have been possible without the faculty and the batchmates as well they were pretty cool thank you thanks a lot hana and we also are very proud to be a part of such a good group of students with focus towards the competitive examination thank you and thanks again and congratulations dedicated to excellence